Blog Talk Radio. Calling all men. It's now your time for your show with your coach, the Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross. Relax, be heard, and be understood. It's a show where men can be men. Now here's the coach who has your back, Linda Gross. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Men's Advocate Show with me, your host, Linda Gross. I am so thrilled to tell you about today's show. We're going to be talking about dating myths put on blast. Yes, indeed. I want to thank my fan, Lyndon, for recommending this topic. It was a great topic. He sent me a video, some other dating site, I guess it is. And there were so many of these dating tips that were wrong. I just felt compelled to do a show on it. So it took a little bit of figuring out, a little engineering on my part on how to pause the video so I could interject my comments to it. But luckily, I was able to figure it out, and here we are. Alrighty, so we're going to be talking about dating tips There's so many common ones out there. I want to set the record straight. I want you to know what is legit and what is not legit and not serving you. Okay, so you can call in to OPIC 323-642-1677. Again, that is 323-642-1677. And we have the chat line. So for those of you who are listening live, post us on the chat line, blogtalkradio.com slash DT Linda Gross, blogtalkradio.com forward slash DT Linda Gross, short for dating tips. Let's make it happen. So let's get started here. Do you think you're attractive to women? Do you know you're attractive? Maybe you've studied the laws of attraction and tried very hard to get where you are today. Or perhaps you were just born with the right physical assets and are fortunate enough to just have a personality that seems likable to most people. But for the most part, boys and men are at a loss when it comes to knowing exactly what a woman wants. And of course, there's no exact science that can tell us what all women want. Nonetheless, We're going to try our best to find out what many women find attractive and maybe help a few of you guys out. Be nice. An article in Men's Health magazine that cited various studies said that in order to attract a woman, men must be disarming in some way. Yep, what that means is just be nice or do things that make you seem more harmless, more sensitive, more caring. More sensitive? More caring? Well... More caring, yes. We're going to go with that because that's one of the four C's. You have to care, otherwise she's going to feel that you're really not into her. So that one is a yes. More sensitive. Okay, well, this is the one where so many girls say, I want a sensitive guy. I want a guy who can cry and show his feelings. Listen, guys, do not go there. They are lying. They don't know what they're talking about. So my rule is for the first 90 days of the relationship, don't cry. Don't be sensitive. Why is this? Because it's not important. On a scale of 1 to 100, it's 100. (laughs) Okay? So what you want to do instead is you want to show your confidence. That is the number one trait that women are looking for. Can you bring out your sensitive side later on? Yes but not until you've established the confidence gene. Okay, got that? All right, so don't listen to what they're saying. Nice guy. Oh, let me address that. When I was writing my book, this was the number one most asked question of me was, why does nice guy not work? Well, guys, nice guy doesn't work because in my definition, it's the guy doesn't know how to close the deal, right? So he's painting her apartment, he's helping her buy tires, he's spending six hours to fix her computer, all this in the hope that she will pay him back and the way that she pays him back is to have sex with him. Ain't gonna happen. Wait for hell to freeze over. She doesn't respect you and that's not a way to get into her pants. Okay? So don't do that. 
No nice guys. It doesn't work. Do I teach good guy? Yes, I teach good guy. You can find out more about good guy in my book, The Science of Mastering Women, The Real Truth About Women That Will Change Your Life Forever. So be a good guy. Have the confidence. Forget nice guy. It doesn't work. So don't listen to this part of the other guy's instruction. The article talked about a study in France in which men who showed they could interact with babies were popular. Whether ladies saw men doing that in public or in photographs, we're told that women who saw men playing with babies were three times more likely to get someone's phone number. So now you know who you should take as your wingman or wing baby. We're joking, of course. Please only interact with babies if it's part of your regular routine. Take a baby? Well, if it happens organically and your brother or sister want you to take your niece out and babysit for a couple of hours or so, fine. But to go out of your way to borrow a baby just to get chicks, I don't recommend it. Is it going to work? Yes, it'll work. There was another talk show host that used to always recommend lying. He said to take out an ATM receipt, somebody else's ATM receipt that has $40,000 on it, and write your phone number on that when you pass out your number to a prospective date. Does it work? I guess it works, but it's lying. So again, if it happens organically, will the girl be into it? Yes. But to go out of your way to concoct a scenario, I don't think it's a good basis for starting a relationship. I think French studies said that if you don't have a baby at hand, try a dog. It said men who walked dogs were more likely to have success talking with women in the street. Again, this is because having a dog can show a degree of sensitivity and caring. Never a bad thing for a long-term relationship. All right, I'm down with having a dog. Does it get the chicks? Yes, it'll get the chicks. Is it that you appear more sensitive and more caring? No, it's not because of that. Girls view this as reliability and consistency. Those are part of fourth C. They're both part of your character. The fact that you have to show up twice a day or three times a day to walk the dog around the block, just like a baby, you have to be reliable and consistent with it, right? You can't just say, oh, I don't feel like it. I'm going to sit on the couch and drink a beer, let the baby cry its head off and what if I care same thing with the dog sooner or later you're going to have an accident so it shows reliability and consistency which is fourth C always a good thing we should say that it might work better if you look like you're a loving owner of your dog what do you mean if you look like a loving owner of your dog if you're not a loving owner of your dog don't have this dog Get another dog. I don't know. Give it back to the shelter or whatever you have to do. If you have to fake something, that fakery does come out in some way. The fakery is the opposite of fourth C. It's the opposite of character. So, no, I'm going to say no to that. Another study, this time from Cornell University, said that if a woman sees you being nice to others, again, either in real life or online, they might be more willing to talk to you. Oh, boy, I hate this one. I hear this advice so commonly. Oh, well, if he's nice to his mother, he's going to be nice to his girlfriend. Oh, if he's nice to the waitress, he's going to be nice to his date. Guess what, people? It's a fallacy. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes they're perfectly nice to a waitress and a mother and absolutely not nice to the girl. So I think it's how the guy treats the girl directly, not third party through the waitress or the mother. Got it? So quit listening to this bad advice. It doesn't work. That research said men who can be seen helping others, perhaps doing charitable work or cleaning up the local park, can come across as caring and therefore attractive. Let me say that being helpful and being charitable is something that you do for your inner peace, for your inner soul. It should never be done with an ulterior motive to win over a girl. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. It would kind of be like saying, I'm giving you a gift, but really the gift giving is for me, meaning that there's an ulterior motive there. It taints the nature of the gift. 
Same with being helpful. Same with being charitable. It dilutes it. It taints it. It's not good, and it's the opposite of fourth C. It's the opposite of being in good character, in good standing. So to this one, I say no. So first and foremost, show you have a sensitive side. Be helpful. Be nice. Be warm. First and foremost, no, I don't want you to put these items on the agenda first off. First off, you want to put confidence on the agenda. That is your only mission in life when you're first meeting somebody. Number two, it says be sensitive, be helpful, be warm. Sensitive, no, that's one of the biggest lies that women tell. I don't want you to be sensitive. As I mentioned before, wait 90 days for your sensitivity. Be helpful, no, I don't want you to necessarily be helpful. She has to earn your helpfulness. I don't want you to give it right out of the gate because then she doesn't appreciate it. So much like the mothers who tell their sons, oh, you have to respect women. No, you do not. I want you to be neutral with them. I don't want you to disrespect them, but at the same token, don't be respectful of them either. They have to earn that. So the helpfulness, they have to earn that too. There has to be reciprocity. You give a little bit, she gives a little bit. You return her call, she returns your call. There is consistency there and you are building up the trust factor. After that, then you can be helpful. Do not be helpful right out of the gate because she will start judging you and inappropriately start judging you. Be warm. Okay, yeah, I'll give you that. Go ahead and be warm. This might go down better than looking like a guy who only cares about his highly prized abs. By the way, she doesn't care about your abs. Sorry, she wants to get to know you first. She wants to know what's your personality. She wants to know if the confidence is there first. Abs are something that she's going to comment on way down the line, maybe a couple of months later after you guys are going steady a little bit, right? Then she'll compliment you on your physique. Most legit women do not care about your abs right out of the gate. So who is going to comment on your abs right out of the gate? I'll tell you who, gold diggers and female idiots. That's who, because they probably don't have fathers in their lives, these women, and they are absolutely clueless and have no discerning ability to evaluate someone's personality or character. So what are they doing? They're going for the obvious. They're going for flash, cash, abs, your car, the tattoos, just superficial things because they don't know how to evaluate things below the surface. By the way, one dating survey we found revealed that men who can't stop taking selfies are not always looked upon well. Make sure you don't go overboard and make the woman think you're a self-centered narcissist. Selfies? Really? Selfies are for chicks. More importantly, selfies are for 17-year-old chicks. If you're a grown man taking selfies, no. Come on, you already know my answer on that. It's a no. Strong is good, though. Do you need to spend half your life lifting weights to be attractive? According to a study at UCLA, not really. But being a little bit built, according to that study, was better than being thin. That same study said slightly muscular men were more attractive than guys with very large muscles. But wait, in 2017, The Guardian cited a study in which 160 women were asked to rate pictures of men's bodies. The faces of the men were not shown. What this study reveals was, in fact, that just about all the women preferred a strong-looking man. We weren't surprised that women found physically strong men attractive. What did surprise us was just how powerful the effect was, said the scientist that led the study. He added, our data couldn't find even a single woman that preferred weaker or feminine male bodies. That study said you didn't have to be a hulk, nor did you have to be totally chiseled, but the woman just about always preferred a strong-looking guy, even if he was a bit overweight. Hold yourself well and smile like you mean it. Slow down there, partner. Don't be defaming my school that way. Now, being strong is kind of the same thing as the guy earlier that was ab-obsessed. We don't want you going there. So yes to the strong, but just don't boast about it. All right? Keep it to yourself. Done. All right. The rest of the study, I do agree with women don't like weak men. They don't like effeminate men. Why is this? Biologically speaking, 
in the event of an emergency or nuclear attack or some sort of weather emergency like an avalanche or a hurricane or tropical thunder, whatever, we want someone that will help the women and children get out of danger. Typically, men are bigger, badder, stronger than we are So we're looking for someone to look up to that can help us out of a bad situation. So the rest of the article, I say yes. You don't always have to be the most handsome fella in the world to attract a woman, but it helps to let her know you're confident. In the book Body Language Secrets, a guide during courtship and dating, it's said that when you walk, you should walk with a purpose. Stand up straight and look like you know where you're going. Body language is important. Walk with a purpose? Absolutely. Walk like you own it. And according to the Journal of Nonverbal Behavior, smiling always helps. But we're told don't grimace and don't flash a quick grin. Only smile when you mean it and let that smile spread across your face, keeping up appearances. Smiling is very important to men, not so much the other way around. I think women really don't care whether you smile or not. According to Psychology Today, you can't go wrong if you not only put time and effort into keeping your body healthy, but you should try and dress well. One reason that dress is important for men is that it projects social status, and women who reject a man in a Burger King uniform might be willing to go out with someone in medical scrubs, said the article. It said that status is attractive to many women, so yep, looking like you have money to spare might not be a bad thing. Any guy at any economic level can always look their best. How do you do it? Invest in an iron and also keep up with your laundry. Nobody likes someone who's got seven loads of laundry piled up in the corner and you're turning your underwear inside out because you're lazy. Don't be the lazy person. Keep up your good looks. In 2018, a study published in Evolution and Human Behavior told us salary matters. That study showed women from North America, China, and Europe photographs of men with information about their salary. They then changed the salary and looked at if their approval rating dropped or increased. A man can move himself two points higher on the attractiveness scale we used if his salary increases by a factor of 10, said one of the study authors. For a female to achieve the same two-point effect, her salary would need to increase by 10,000 times. Look in the mirror. Okay, so it might help to have some cash, but wealth is a relative thing. Maybe you can date someone whose wealth isn't much different from yours. Again, it's not the money that matters per se. It's the effect that money has on men. When men have money, they just naturally stand tall and are more confident. It's a nice feeling to know that you can pay your bills, you can provide, and you have a little extra money in your pocket to do the fun things in life. The Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross. We will be discussing men's issues, dating, relationships, sex, women, fitness, health, business, men's hobbies, men's rights, and more. She will be talking about excerpts from her men's book, Mastering Women, too. Hi, guys. You've heard her on the Men's Advocate Show. Linda Gross wants you to know what turns a woman on and makes her go wild so she just can't help herself. Check out Linda's book, Mastering Women, Real Truth About Women That'll Change Your Life Forever. Linda gives you all the insider tips on how to catch a woman and, if you want, to keep her. In four easy steps, these proven techniques will make women just melt. Ever wonder why the girl you really liked seemed to be great when you met, and then all of a sudden just goes cold on you and turns you off? Linda will also let you know what not to do on a date. Never blow it again by losing another hot woman. You don't have to be good looking or even have money. Her book, Mastering Women, is available in paperback and ebook. Men, Linda's on your side. So buy her book, Mastering Women. Buy it for now. And don't keep your women waiting another minute. Get Mastering Women today. You've heard her on the Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross. How can you help further? From her Facebook fan page of the same name. Hit the Shop Now button and save this link to your favorites. Make all your usual Amazon purchases and some of the revenue will support her show at no additional cost to you. No book purchase required. Just start with this link every time. The Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross thanks you.
2018, The Atlantic published research that told us many people date aspirationally, meaning they want someone out of their league. If having leagues sounds unfair, a professor of sociology at the University of Michigan said, just get used to it because they exist and they aren't going anywhere. Dating aspirationally, meaning that the woman wants to date someone who makes a little more money than she does, absolutely true. Hate to admit it, guys, but I know women who are making a quarter million dollars a year, and they still want somebody who makes one dollar more than they do. It's a respect thing. If she doesn't respect you, if she can't look up to you, she's not going to want to be with you. Facts of life, sorry, but that's how it is. The study found that on dating sites, women were way more selective than men. Men replied to messages 80% of the time, and women only 20%. It said that indeed there was a hierarchy of desirability. A hierarchy of desirability. Well, what that means to me is, what is your motivation level? The reason why it's 80-20 is because men are motivated. They want sex. They want in, right? So <laughs> they are way more motivated than women in this area and that's why to women it's not that important so in order to get in you've got to cater to what a woman is looking for the guy might be looking for sex but that's not necessarily important to most women. So what is she looking for? Well, here's where my book comes in. The Science of Mastering Women, The Real Truth About Women That Will Change Your Life Forever. They are the four C's. One, confidence. Two, connect with her. Three, caring and for character, okay? So what is connect with her? This is a really important one, especially when you're first dating somebody, especially when you're trying to meet on a dating app or even in person. If you're not making a connection, meaning that if you're not finding something in common to talk about, your fields of view are overlapping. Maybe you're at a restaurant and you say, wow, have you heard this band before? Or have you eaten these really great french fries before or you know what they make this really fabulous drink this cocktail only on thursdays have you had it try to find something in common if you are not connecting with her she's not gonna care now on the social media apps, I know guys only look at the pictures, but that's a big mistake. That's not how you're going to get in. She is expecting you to read. She's expecting you to find something in common, something that turns you on about what she's written, or it could be even about the picture, maybe the location of the picture or whatever it is that you're pulling from that thread. Connect with her. It's in the book more in detail, but that's really what you need to do. But it also said, if men are persistent, sometimes they can move up this hierarchy. That study, like many others, showed us that while women were more successful in their 20s, many women were attracted to older men. But success means a lot, and we found two separate British studies in recent years that said men who appeared in photos to be of high status seemed to have the most luck on dating sites look older than you are. Men sometimes grow a beard to look older, but we're told by various sources that if you do grow one, you don't have to look like a Greek philosopher of days gone by. A light beard is preferable to most women. We're also told about something called the George Clooney effect. A 2010 study consisting of 3,770 heterosexual adults found that women often like older guys. And when women are more financially independent, they seem to like older guys even more. There's no magic age gap, and it seems that if there is a big age gap, there's more likelihood of a divorce. Still, from what we can see, many women are willing to have a relationship with an older guy. It doesn't happen often the other way around, but it can happen. But I have no hair. Going bald can really get a young man down, and some guys will go to extraordinary lengths to stop hair loss or hide it. You can find articles out there stating that bald is beautiful, but that might not always be the case. While women will differ greatly on what they think about a hairless or near hairless head, scientific studies tell us that bald men are generally seen as a little bit more dominant and more agreeable than their hairy cousins. In another study, they were seen as looking older, but also being more masculine and stronger. In another study, 76% of women said they didn't mind at all a bald man. But get this, most didn't like it when the guy tried to hide it. As Psychology Today writes, the message from the research seems clear. If you're going bald, embrace it. Even the most beautiful people have issues with their bodies. 
could be one thing, could be many things. After a point in time, there are certain things that you can change. Go ahead and change them if it really bothers you that much. And those things that you can't change, you just have to let it go. You have to get over it somehow because it exudes a lack of confidence because it means that you're not confident with yourself, you're not secure with yourself, and it's a deterrent. So learn to live with certain things like baldness. But it also said if men are persistent, sometimes they can move up this hierarchy. That study, like many others, showed us that while women were more successful in their 20s, many women were attracted to older men. But success means a lot. And we found two separate British studies in recent years that said men who appeared in photos to be of high status seem to have the most luck on dating sites. Look older than you are. Men sometimes grow a beard to look older, but we're told by various sources that if you do grow one, you don't have to look like a Greek philosopher of days gone by. A light beard is preferable to most women. We're also told about something called the George Clooney effect. A 2010 study consisting of 3,770 heterosexual adults found that women often like older guys. And when women are more financially independent, they seem to like older guys even more. There's no magic age gap, and it seems that if there is a big age gap, there's more more likelihood of a divorce. Still, from what we can see, many women are willing to have a relationship with an older guy. It doesn't happen often the other way around, but it can happen. But I have no hair. Going bald can really get a young man down, and some guys will go to extraordinary lengths to stop hair loss or hide it. You can find articles out there stating that bald is beautiful, but that might not always be the case. While women will differ greatly on what they think about a hairless or near hairless head, scientific studies tell us that bald men are generally seen as a little bit more dominant and more agreeable than their hairy cousins. In another study, they were seen as looking older, but also being more masculine and stronger. In another study, 76% of women said they didn't mind at all a bald man, but get this, most didn't like it when the guy tried to hide it. As Psychology Today writes, the message from the research seems clear. If you're going bald, embrace it. Even the most beautiful people have issues with their bodies. Could be one thing, could be many things. After a point in time, there are certain things that you can change. Go ahead and change them if it really bothers you that much. And those things that you can't change, you just have to let it go. You have to get over it somehow because it exudes a lack of confidence because it means that you're not confident with yourself, you're not secure with yourself, and it's a deterrent. So learn to live with certain things like baldness. You don't always have to be the most handsome fella in the world to attract a woman, but it helps to let her know you're confident. In the book Body Language Secrets, a guide during courtship and dating, it's said that when you walk, you should walk with a purpose. Stand up straight and look like you know where you're going. Body language is important. Walk with a purpose? Absolutely. Walk like you own it. And according to the Journal of Nonverbal Behavior, smiling always helps. But we're told don't grimace and don't flash a quick grin. Only smile when you mean it and let that smile spread across your face, keeping up appearances. Smiling is very important to men, not so much the other way around. I think women really don't care whether you smile or not. According to Psychology Today, you can't go wrong if you not only put time and effort into keeping your body healthy, but you should try and dress well. One reason that dress is important for men is that it projects social status, and women who reject a man in a Burger King uniform might be willing to go out with someone in medical scrubs, said the article. It said that status is attractive to many women, so yep, looking like you have money to spare might not be a bad thing. Any guy at any economic level can always look their best. How do you do it? Invest in an iron and also keep up with your laundry. Nobody likes someone who's got seven loads of laundry piled up in the corner and you're turning your underwear inside out because you're lazy. Don't be the lazy person. Keep up your good looks. In 2018, a study published in Evolution and Human Behavior told us salary matters. That study showed women from North America, China, and Europe photographs of men with information about their salary. They then changed the salary and looked at if their approval rating dropped or increased. A man can move himself two points higher on the attractiveness scale we used if his salary increases by a factor of 10, said one of the study authors. For a female to achieve the same two-point effect, her salary would need to increase by 10,000 times. Look in the mirror. Okay, so it might help to have some cash, but wealth is a relative thing. Maybe you can date someone whose wealth isn't much different from yours. 
again, it's not the money that matters per se. It's the effect that money has on men. When men have money, they just naturally stand tall and are more confident. It's a nice feeling to know that you can pay your bills, you can provide, and you have a little extra money in your pocket to do the fun things in life. The height difference. When we talk about the ideal height, it's more about the difference than just being a certain height. In the UK, research tells us that most women wanted a man over 164 centimeters. Hey, that works out to be five foot four. And most men didn't want a woman taller than 182 centimeters. And that's five foot ten. But in general, most women want a man taller than them, just not a lot taller than them. According to an article in Business Insider, which cited lots of research, men tend to be about 12.7 centimeters taller than women on average in most countries. That's less than a half an inch. While research showed most men wanted a woman slightly shorter, it seems that being around the same height wasn't much of a problem either. LOL. Okay, let's put some of these uh, myths to rest, shall we? So the article said that, that they prefer their men to be at least five foot four. Gee, I don't know if these men are from malnourished countries, but that's certainly not the number, the minimum number in the U.S. The minimum number that women like their men to be at is five foot nine. Optimally, without knowing anything else, most women will say they want someone who is between 5'10 and 6'2. Over 6'2, that's going to be a deterrent as well because now the difference is way too great and it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So it might be a negative to be overly tall as well, unless you're also dating a tall woman. All right, so the audio said that women should be under five foot ten. Pretty, pretty tall. I think a lot of men would not want a five foot ten woman, as not all men are greater than five ten, so I don't know how that's going to work out. They're saying that they prefer the men to be at least a half inch taller. No, I do not agree on that as well. So here are the stats on that. Most women agree that the gap is is between four to six inches between male and female. That's the ideal height difference. Now, men are an average of about five inches taller than most women. It's a height difference that holds true in most places around the world, from Brazil all the way to China. The average American woman standing just over five feet, three inches tall, is around five and a half inches shorter than her average American male. In 2014, a study by Rice University and the University of North Texas, 50% of women insisted on only dating men who were taller than they were. In in other words, it's pretty important to most women. The taller women are, the more important they say it is that their partner be even taller. Well, of course, because it's just proportional, right? So being tall is a power play. Tallness is associated with dominance, masculinity, and a higher status among men. Most men won't even physically challenge another man who is four to six inches taller than they are. Male height is not just a desired trait for women. Tall men get a better deal when it comes to pay and status at work as well. They make more money and they may even be more likely to get promoted. Most Fortune 500 CEOs are taller than the average man. Evolutionary psychologists argue that this is because being tall is a sign that a man can dominate a predator and protect his family. The National Bureau of Economic Research found that shorter men do tend to marry younger and marry lower educated women. And psychologists think that it might be because they're compensating for their short why are so many CEOs tall? Well, there is a penchant for associating height with the quality of mind and strength. A survey of Fortune 500 CEOs height revealed that they were on average six feet tall, which is approximately two and a half inches taller than the average American man. About 30% were six foot two in height or more. In comparison, 
only 3.9% of the overall U.S. population is of this height. On the other end of the spectrum, less than 3% of CEOs were below 5 foot 7 inches in height, whereas 90% of CEOs are above average height. Many criminals are tall and huge people, also cashing in on their physical advantage. Now, let's not chuck short people altogether. Studies have observed that shorter people have faster reaction times, a greater ability to accelerate body movements, stronger muscles in proportion to body weight, greater endurance, and the ability to, to rotate their body faster. Also, they are less likely to break bones when falling. As a consequence of these physical attributes, shorter people excel as gymnasts, divers, skiers, martial artists, rock climbers, figure skaters, rodeo riders, soccer players, and hey, even long distance runners. Within their weight classes, they are excellent wrestlers, boxers, and weightlifters. Now, what is an inch of height worth? Well, data analyzed from four large research studies that had followed thousands of people from birth to adulthood and corrected for variables such as age, gender, and weight came up with this worth in salary. That means that a person who is six feet tall, but who is otherwise identical to someone who is five foot five inches tall will make on average, $5,500 more per year. If you take this over the course of a 30-year career and compound it, a tall person will enjoy hundreds of thousands of dollars of earnings over a shorter person. And there you have it. And let's get back to other height statistics. The dating myth said that most people are fine with having a same height partner. No, that's not true either. Come on now. So four to six inches, that seems to be the gap. So what's the solution if you're a shorter guy? If, if you're five foot seven or under than that, date a shorter woman. Get the height differential to be four to six inches and you'll be fine. I don't know what's with you guys. You always want to date a five foot six inch woman. Forget about it. Date a shorter woman than you. That's the solution. Hey guys, do you have a nagging problem that you just can't get a handle on? Now you can talk to an expert coach right in the privacy of your own home. Meet in person, over the phone, or with a free Skype call anywhere in the world. Linda is here to make it easy for you. Linda Gross has done years of academic research combined with interviewing over 20,000 men. Linda's expert advice gets you through tackling relationship issues, business goals, conflict resolution, and removing lifetime roadblocks that have kept you back, usually handled in four sessions or less. Realize the benefits now. Go to the Men's Advocate page slash coaching and you'll be on your way. That's themensadvocate.com slash coaching. Darn, maybe you missed part of this show. Maybe you're still at work during the show. Maybe you heard the show but would like to listen again. Your problems are easily solved. Listen to any and all of Linda's archived shows at your convenience. Just Google SoundCloud The Men's Advocate. That's Google SoundCloud The Men's Advocate. The on-demand library is also available on the TuneIn app. Subscribe now and please share with your friends. There are a plethora of stories that tell us the cliché is true, that women often fall for men that are funny to them. One serious study about attractiveness told us that individuals, particularly men, expressing humor were rated more desirable than non-humorous individuals for a serious relationship and marriage, but only when these individuals were physically attractive. Another study in France put this to the test and arranged for a bunch of guys to be stood in a bar. One of the group would then tell a funny joke, which would make all of his friends laugh. They would sometimes change the man telling the joke, and then after, ask the women in the bar to rate the guys. The joke tellers were three times more likely to get a phone number based on their rating for attractiveness and intelligence. An article in Life Science told us the same, that scientific research shows that humor is an attractive trait for men. 
In another test, men and women from a university in the USA were monitored while speed dating. The research showed that while humor didn't always win someone over, when there was a complete lack of humor, it was always seen as bad. Wherever you look, and we looked at many studies, humor was a winner for men. And when two people laugh together, it's a wonderful thing. As one researcher said in an interview, when two people are laughing at the same thing, they're basically saying, I share your perspective, your values, and I certainly share what you think is amusing. Humor? Boy, if I could have a dollar every time I heard women say one of the top qualities they look for in a guy is humor, I would be a millionaire. No, 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 and no. Humor is not on the top 10. I don't care what a woman tells you. It's a cop-out. It's a lie. They don't know what they're talking about. Really. Go look in my book. Anywhere in my book does it say you need to possess humor to win her over? No, it doesn't. By the way, I have known some exceedingly humorous guys, and I'm just splitting my side from laughter. But guess what? I didn't go out with them. So it's not the humor that's important. Sorry, guys. Is it an added bonus? Sure, it's an added bonus. Is it going to make you win over the girl? No. Give it a rest. What else? Maybe you should become a musician. One French study found that men who walked around with a guitar were more likely to get someone's phone number than men who walked around with nothing at all or even a gym bag. Walking around with a guitar, being a musician, well, I do have to say yes on this one. She may not date you, but she definitely will drop her panties. <laughs> That's why so many ugly short guys become musicians because they know this to be true i mean come on right uh yeah she may not bring you home to the family she may not bring you home to thanksgiving but in the heat of the moment she likes how you sing she likes how you emote she likes that sensitive part of you only works by the way the sensitivity only works in the musical field so don't try this in other fields but I'm going to say, yes, being a musician is a panty dropper. If you can't be creative, be mindful. A study in Australia cited by the independent newspaper in the UK told us that mindful men were attracted to women. Or perhaps you're a rougher type of character. Maybe that works too. A 2009 study undertaken by the University of Liverpool and the University of Stirling took photos of men and doctored some of them so that the men had facial scars. What happened? It seems the women liked the men with scars or at least said they liked these men for short-term relationships. Liking a guy for his scars? No, I can't really say that women seek that feature out. This is a male quality. Males are good when other human beings have scars. They're even okay with the female having a scar. To a man, a scar means that you've endured the battle wounds, you've survived, you didn't die, and you've got some character to show for it, right? So to a man... Looking at somebody else's scar is a good thing. It's a bonus. Uh, I cannot say this is true the other way around. I don't think women view scars in the same way. They don't rate them in the same way. If anything, women probably would see a scar as a negative. They're obviously trying to cover up any kind of blemish on their face or wherever on their body. And they're very self-conscious of spots and marks. So I'm going to say, nope, not on this one. Women are not seeking that trait. Welcome back, everybody. You're currently listening to the Men's Advocate Show with me, host Linda Gross. How's everybody doing today? I hope you enjoyed our show with regard to dating myths that are busted. By the way, if you have missed last week's show, we were talking about rich men don't. Have you ever wondered how rich guys roll? I'm sure you're convinced that girls fall them because they are rich. Well, it's not the rich factor that's getting the job done. It's the confidence that follows them everywhere they go because they are rich. Let's vote. 
what they are up to and how you can put these skills in your lineup. So if you happen to have missed last week's show, so easy to do. You can either go on the Archive Talk Radio right here on this program, or you can go to SoundCloud or TuneIn. Find all you have to do is go to Google. If you're not a subscriber already, go to Google. Type in the Men's Advocate Show, the Men's Advocate Show. It's the name across all the platforms, and you should be able to pull up last week, not only last week's show, but any and all of my archive shows. On the SoundCloud, you have about five years of shows, if you're a new listener, that you can catch on, all right? And for some reason, you pull it up, you might even be able to find our listing on your favorite podcast subscription app. So it doesn't have to be SoundCloud. And then I get messages, my listeners saying, hey, you're on iTunes, or hey, you're on this Apple site, or hey, you're on this, hey, you're on that. So apparently, a lot of different places, so make that happen. Anyway, I wanted to thank the Aaron Clary listeners. I got a tremendous response for all of those people who bought my book. book by the way, the name of the book is Science of Mastering Women, The Real Truth About Women Change Your Life Forever. I want to thank Aaron's listeners. And if you've already read the book, I know many of you have, please do leave a review. And that goes for any listeners. Leave a review on Amazon. It really, really does help other people find me. <laughs> and that's what we need, right? To spread the word, stop these idiotic myths and lies, and stop you from wasting your time and using your time and energy more efficiently. So... Go ahead, leave an Amazon review. You can leave four to five stars, whatever you like, or better yet, just type a few words for the actual. All will be appreciated. Thank you so much for joining me on today's program. We're usually Tuesdays. You can reach us next Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on the Men's Advocate Show. Bye for now. And we'll catch you next time.